In our previous episode, we told you how Nigeria's first republic fell on January 15, 1966. In today's video, we bring to your view the events that led to the fall of Nigeria's second republic on December 31, 1983. The elections of 1979 saw Alhaji Shehu Shagari emerge as the first executive president of Nigeria. There were great expectations as oil prices were on the high side and revenues were on the increase. During Shagari's tenure, the country practiced a multi-party democracy. Five parties which existed as of then were the National Party of Nigeria NPN, Unity Party of Nigeria UPN, Nigeria's People Party NPP, Great Nigeria People's Party GNPP, and the People's Redemption Party PRP. The NPN, which won the presidency, was a dominant party, while the other parties controlled some of the states. Nigeria had 19 states with a governor and a deputy overseeing the affairs of the state, including the local governments. The Second Republic faced a lot of troubles. There were the teachers' strike of 1981, the crash in oil prices, and the Maitasin riots in Kano, Kaduna, Meduguri, and other major cities in northern Nigeria. Government spending, which ought to have been reduced due to the country being in a recession because of falling oil prices, increased like never before, and funds were highly mismanaged. This era saw Nigeria's debt profile rise from 3.3 billion naira in 1978 to 14.7 billion naira in 1982. Shagari's ministers were also assumed to be highly corrupt. For example, his transport minister Umaru Diko was alleged to have misappropriated over 4 billion naira meant for rice importation. Diko was also said to have made a statement that nobody was suffering in Nigeria and challenged anyone to produce a poor man in Nigeria picking trash like the poor in America. Arson was also committed on public buildings to destroy evidence of corruption and looting. The 1983 general elections were marked by excessive electoral malpractices and rigging. The ruling party was aggressive in their ambition to retain power. Although Shagari won the election and promised to deal with corruption in his second term, it only lasted for three months before his government was overthrown. The Second Republic has been described as being prebendal. This means it was a political era where elected officials and politicians felt they have a right to a share of government revenues using the nation's coffers with reckless abandon to benefit themselves and their supporters. The downturn of Nigeria began during this period. Prior to this, former military head of state General Olusegun Obasanjo had already laid the groundwork for bringing in a civilian government. Obasanjo in a national broadcast, had earlier warned that his regime was committed to bringing about an elected government in 1979 through a peaceful process of free and fair elections. The 50-man constitution drafting committee, earlier inaugurated by Murtala Mohammed, submitted its report on September 14, 1976, after drafting a new constitution that modeled the American system. Also, a 24-member Federal Electoral Commission, FEDECO, was formed in October of the same year, headed by Chief Michael Ani. Obasanjo inaugurated the electoral body in November 1976, and it became legal in May 1979. The newly drafted constitution was published on September 21, 1978, leading to the lifting of the ban on political activity. As provided by the constitution, five political parties were formally registered to participate and contest in the 1979 elections and Alhaji Shehu Shagari of the NPN won the presidential election. Now, 
Nevertheless, Nigeria's Second Republic still fell. Some of the factors that were responsible for the fall are as follows. Shagari's government provided a conducive atmosphere for fund mismanagement even in the face of economic recession. There was no accountability, contract sums were inflated, and illegal dealings were done with foreign exchange. Forgery, fraud, and embezzlement were the order of the day. To save the country from this financial downturn, borrowing both internally and externally became the perceived solution, which incurred a high debt for the nation. The state governors were culpable as well, as funds fraudulently left the country's coffers into private purses, and vital documents that could expose such acts were consumed by unexplainable fires in government buildings. Also, the political class at will violated the constitution. The executive branch of the government took decisions outside the constitution and the legislative arm that ought to put the executive in check and ensured good governance was lacking in its duties. The politicians were oblivious to the sufferings of the masses and were only interested in their personal aggrandizement. Farming, manufacturing and assembling of vehicles took a back seat as oil money was flowing like milk and honey. Thus, when the oil prices went down suddenly, Nigeria was not prepared. Unemployment was another factor that led to the fall of Nigeria's Second Republic. Due to unemployment, armed robbery and thuggery were rife in the country. On January 17, 1983, Shagari ordered the expulsion of some undocumented West African immigrants from the country. These immigrants, about 2 million people, most of them Ghanaians, were deported from Nigeria on February 2, 1983. This action led to the popular phrase, Ghana must go. However, this did not curb unemployment as idle unemployed youths were used as instruments of violence during the 1983 elections. Those who were employed were being owed salaries, health services were poorly funded and managed while the educational institutions were in shambles. Also, about 1,000 followers of an Islamic cult might have seen who had rampaged the north for three successive years Attacking religious rivals were granted amnesty by President Shehu Shagari. This move was highly criticized by his political enemies. The army's confidence in the competence of Shagari as a commander-in-chief began to wane and it contributed to the successful military takeover of his government on December 31, 1983. The final nail to the coffin of Nigeria's Second Republic was the massive rigging that characterized the 1983 elections four months before Shagari was booted out. This led to disputes in different parts of the country as no party was innocent of this affair. Ballot boxes were duly stuffed, underaged voting was condoned, and election results were outrightly falsified. Even the FEDECO, which was the electoral body in charge of elections during Nigeria's Second Republic, was not left out of the mayhem which occurred in different states over the announcement of winners. There were back and forth court cases challenging the results and properties and lives were lost in the process. A military intervention would eventually bring Nigeria's Second Republic to an abrupt end on December 31, 1983. Brigadier Sunny Abacha's radio broadcast announcing the takeover was preceded by the martial music Nigerians had been accustomed to. The fall of the Second Republic was not really a surprise to anyone as it was a long time coming. There was discontent among the people so they welcomed the change with open arms despite Shagari's promise at his second term inauguration to right all the wrongs of his first tenure in office. On the one hand, Shagari was a peace-loving and a decent individual who had the people's interest at heart. But on the other hand, he was not firm enough to curb the excesses of his people in government. His gentle nature and disposition were taken advantage of. 
The political class did not learn anything from the fall of Nigeria's First Republic, so they committed some of the mistakes their predecessors had made in the former republic. On January 1, 1984, Major General Muhammad de Buhari made his maiden broadcast as the head of state, while Brigadier Tunde Idiagmo became his de facto deputy. The economic problems that had plagued the nation under Shagari continued under Buhari, who instituted restrictions on the press, political freedoms, and trade unionists. Nigerians initially welcomed Buhari's efforts at fighting corruption and improving societal values, but the repressive measures used by his regime along with the unending economic troubles led to discontent among the people. After a year and eight months in office, even his military colleagues who helped him to snatch power from Shagari were fed up with him, and his government was overthrown by his chief of army staff, Major General Ibrahim Babangida, on August 27, 1985. After spending eight years in office, Babangida would go on to announce a transition process that would lead to the creation of Nigeria's Third Republic. But that republic was a stillbirth. You can check out the full story in our next video.